today I'm telling you everything you need to know about dining on the Celebrity Edge and we're starting right now. Taking a cruise usually means going on an adventure and for a big foodie like me that adventure is always culinary. I just came back from a 10 day southern caribbean cruise on a beautiful Celebrity Edge and today I'm going to make you an expert at everything food related on this ship. Whether you're new to cruising or a seasoned pro, Celebrity Edge offers a ton of dining options. There are so many choices that it can be overwhelming and even confusing, so let's break down all of them so you don't have to waste any time on your next vacation. Celebrity Edge does not have a traditional main dining room like the rest of the cruises you may be used to. There are four main dining rooms on this ship, each with its own flavor and exclusive menu. They're called Cosmopolitan, Normandy, Cyprus, and Tuscany, and are themed after American, French, Greek, and Italian cuisine, respectively. All four are complimentary to all guests and serve dinner starting from 5 p.m. Reservations are encouraged, but you can just walk into any of them. Breakfast and lunch are served only at Cosmopolitan, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Whichever restaurant you decide to go to, you will be able to pick from essentially two menus. Each of the four restaurants has their own exclusive menu that never changes. It's kind of like a specialty restaurant. That exclusive menu will always be the same throughout your cruise. Additionally, there is a traditional menu that changes every day and is standard across all four dining restaurants. So whichever restaurant you pick, you'll be able to order from that day's traditional menu which is kind of like a cruise menu that you're used to, as well as that exclusive menu at each of the restaurants. One of my favorite things to do is come over here during the day and check out the lunch menus and the dinner menus at the restaurants. Check it out. This is the Cypress dining room when there's no one around. And you can come in here and check out the menu. Let's walk over to the Cosmopolitan dining room and check that one out. Actually, really pretty. All the dining rooms in the ship look amazing. Look at this place. It's gorgeous. Huh? Look at the wine bottles up top. And this is Tuscany. This is Normandy right here. Now I very much like this setup. It creates an exclusive feel and gives guests more food options at no extra charge. Much better than going to the same dining room every night. Now the food is good. Notice my hesitation here. It really all depends on your expectations. If you're not a foodie, you will be happy with any of the four main restaurants. The exclusive menu really depends on your own taste. Some may prefer one restaurant over the other, but in general, the exclusive and the traditional menus serve consistent 7 out of 10 meals for an average person. Foodies, however, will consider it subpar and rate it probably 6 or lower. Also, I have to mention the desserts in the main dining rooms were below average in many ways. I was disappointed in the desserts from the main dining rooms pretty much every single time. Now, one pro tip here is to make sure you visit any of the four main dining rooms on the last formal night of the cruise. This is considered to be the best menu. It's where you'll find lobster tails, beef wellingtons, baked Alaskas, and so on. Don't miss the last formal night in any of the four main dining rooms. Alternatively, I suggest skipping breakfast here. It's served at Cosmopolitan only and is basically the exact same food you would get in the buffet, but served tableside. You will have many more choices and much more flexibility if you go to the buffet for breakfast. We will talk about the buffet in just a second, but it's a no brainer unless you really just like have mobility issues or don't want to go get your own food. The buffet has way more choices and it's basically the same food. I also don't suggest the lunch in the main dining room either. It pains me to say this. I love the lunch menus on cruise ships. It's always one of my pro tips to be honest with you. Usually you don't want to miss lunch in the main dining room. It's only served from 12 to 1.30 on sea days. Usually it's very nice and has an exclusive menu you won't get to taste on the rest of your cruise. Usually very good. 
but on the edge, the lunch menu was a subpar. You're better off at the buffet, or if you're willing to pay, the absolute best lunch is at the La Grande Bistro, which we'll cover in just a minute. The buffet is called Ocean View Cafe and serves breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night snacks throughout the day. It operates like clockwork and offers quick meals to anyone who walks in. The food is consistently about a 7 out of 10 for most people. Breakfast is my favorite part here, the best option in my opinion, unless you're in aqua or a retreat class. Lunch and dinner selections are good as well. Decent amount of choices with consistent quality. Once again, unless you are a foodie, you should be satisfied with the selection. It's good, but not great. Alternatively, late night snacks at the buffet are just bad. Once dinner service is over, you're better off waiting until the next day. Avoid late night food at the buffet, it's not good at all. Now your other options for breakfast and lunch are Spa Cafe, Eden Cafe, Mass Grill, or Cafe Bacchio for snacks. So Spa Cafe is located in the back of the ship, in the solarium. It's open for breakfast and lunch. It serves small but healthy options sandwiches, fruit plates, salads, and freshly squeezed juices. A great way to take advantage of your drink package is to get one of those juices or drinks every day if you're into this sort of thing. Remember, they're like six, seven dollars per drink, but are included in that package. So food is free here, but the juices and the drinks, of course, will cost you extra. And your drink package covers it. So make sure to get in here if you're into juicing. Alternatively, you can check out Eden Cafe for breakfast and lunch as well. They serve soups, sandwiches, paninis, and other snacks. It has like a new age deli feel, very different from the rest of the ship, and also free to all guests for breakfast and lunch. Personally, I found lunch at Eden to be much better than breakfast. I recommend you at least try it for yourself to see if it hits the spot. Mass Grill is another lunch option for you. Located on the top of the ship, it offers burgers, hot dogs, and so on. It's very simple. Think of your home grill. This is the same and also free to all guests. Cafe Bacchio is located on deck five. It offers premium coffees and teas, as well as desserts that are changed daily. The coffees and the teas are extra cost. It is, however, included in those drink packages I was telling you about, but more on those later. The desserts here are free, so I highly suggest you stop by for a snack. My favorites are the macaroons. Sometimes they're changed. They have different flavors. Oh, they're so good. Make sure to get one. Ice cream is also available at Scoops, which is located in Ocean View Cafe, as well as the pizza, although I had a hard time finding the pizza on this ship, to be honest with you. And this kind of concludes all of the free options on the Celebrity Edge. Now there are plenty of options and of course they should satisfy most of the average eaters. Foodies, however, will have to step it up and pay extra if they want to be satisfied. Celebrity Edge offers a ton of dining options that all cost extra, but will very much bring you to that premium dining experience you may be looking for. Not all, however, are created equally, so make sure you choose wisely. First, let's start with lunch. La Grande Bistro is located on deck 5 and offers a premium lunch for $35 per person. It's absolutely fantastic in every single way. I cannot say enough good things about this place. Being the cheapest out of all of the paid venues, it offers exceptional value. Do not be fooled, it's the best lunch on the ship, apart from Blue and Lumine, which are aqua and sweet guest restaurants, more about those in a few. La Grande Bistro also offers daily specials, only paid restaurant on the ship to have changing daily specials. The Rack of Lamb Monday special was absolutely epic. This restaurant is a 10 out of 10. The croissants and other pastries are also very good. You definitely don't want to miss lunch here. Make sure to check out La Grande Bistro. Alternatively for dinner, this place turns into a completely different restaurant. Le Petit Chef and Friends is an exclusive dinner and a show. You are presented with a four course meal that is prepared right in front of you via a visual 3D mapping. 
Le Petit Chef is a quirky little character that works hard with his friends to prepare your meal. Each course has a show right on your table and then it, the food actually gets delivered to you. It's really a great experience that costs hundreds of dollars per person in New York City and other places in the world. And the food is very, very good. I give them an 8 out of 10 for presentation, taste and quality. One thing to remember, the menu is a set. So you have four course meal and then you have also one alternative for each one of those meals. So it's essentially eight items only. So make sure you're okay with that, you know, with what they're serving before you pay extra for it. But do remember, this is a fantastic experience. Like I said, it costs hundreds of dollars extra everywhere in the world. So you may want to take advantage of it and check it out while you are on the Celebrity Edge. Pinecott Steakhouse is located on Deck 5 and offers a classic steakhouse experience. It's serving premium cuts of meat that are cooked to perfection. My filet mignon was fantastic. Expertly prepared, along with family-style sides and premium sauces that you would expect, a, you know, a premium steakhouse for your meat. The fine cut is a solid 8 out of 10, I would say. No perfect score here because the sides were just a bit stale. And, and not as tasty as they could be. Like, they really didn't complement the meat, which was absolutely perfect. The desserts were just okay as well. So this is why I give them an 8 out of 10. The meat was great. The rest of the food eh, could use a little help. Rooftop Grill is a premium food venue that's nested towards the back of the rooftop garden. It serves both lunch and dinner. It features an open sky dining with grilled and smoked entrees like filet mignons and beef briskets, wings, sliders, flatbread pizzas, salads, and a bunch of sides. Now my filet mignon was perfect. It was seasoned with the true flavor of a wood-fired grill. The rest of the sides were again just okay. They needed more flavor to pop in order to complement the wood flavoring and the quality of the meat. The smoked brisket was very bland and just okay, while the seafood kebab and the scallops were actually not very good. This menu seems to be a hit or a miss, costing it an extra point and putting it at a 7 out of 10. It's slightly above the main dining room, but below the other paid restaurants on the ship, in my opinion. Raw on 5 is an a la carte venue that offers sushi, sashimi, caviar, raw items like oysters and a few cooked dishes like crab cakes, noodles and soups. All seafood themed and all a la carte. It's generally very good but I end up skipping it due to having so many other dining options. I did visit this restaurant on other celebrity ships. Think of it as a good sushi place back home. This is kind of the same and basically why I skipped it. I can't rate this particular one because I didn't eat here but normally the other raw and five restaurants rate around 8 out of 10. Another awesome restaurant is Eden, which is located right at the back of the boat with some of the most amazing views. Check this out. Probably be my favorite table. Right over here, this one. Check out the views at the back, the wake, the entire view. Oh, this is where I would be sitting if I was at this restaurant. Eden is located in the back of the ship and offers a very unique experience. The cuisine and wine list at Eden restaurants are rooted in nature and draw inspiration from every single region in the world. It features an open kitchen that allows you to watch the head chef and her team of culinary experts preparing your meals. This restaurant was designed in order to win culinary awards. It's absolutely fantastic in every single way. Perfect 10 out of 10. I would give it more if I could. I ate here multiple times and it was perfect every single time. I tried almost every appetizer and half of the main dishes and I still cannot tell you which is my favorite. I just cannot say good things, enough good things about Eden. If you take anything from this video, make sure to go to Eden. I know the price is a little hefty. It's absolutely worth it. This restaurant is on the same culinary level as Lumine, which is the next thing that we have to talk about. There are two main restaurants on the ship that serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner exclusively to aqua class and retreat guests. Blue is open to aqua class rooms only. And this right here is Blue, one of the dining rooms that's only available to the suite and the aqua class level guests. You need to book a specific room in order to be able to come in here. Uh, this is actually really nice in here. I love this, but this is Blue. And Luminae is for suites only. 
so both of these places are off limit to all other guests. Even if you're willing to pay, you cannot eat at any of these restaurants. And I mentioned this in my other videos, and of course I'll say it again here, I very much dislike paywalling restaurants behind the most expensive rooms on the ship. Best food should be available to all of those who are at least willing to pay. I understand the economics and the reasoning behind this, it makes sense from both sides, but I very much dislike this airline style experience. This is not what cruising is all about. Now my rant aside, Blue offers healthy dining options to those who are staying in the Aqua class rooms. It's one of the perks for guests who decide to pay extra. Now I was not allowed to eat here this cruise, but I booked an Aqua class stateroom on the Celebrity Beyond in a few weeks, so you'll have an in-depth review of Blue, everything I eat, how it all rates against all other restaurants and dishes, so make sure to subscribe, you don't want to miss out when that video comes out. Last but not least is Lumine. Just like Blue, it's very exclusive and only available to guests who are willing to pay for the retreat package. Now let me tell you, this place is a top tier dining on this ship. I got an opportunity to visit it for lunch as a special guest. Big thank you to Martin Dvorak for this opportunity. The man is an absolute gem. Celebrity is lucky to have him. Now this restaurant is absolutely perfect. I got a chance to eat lunch here and it was so good it brought tears to my eyes. Fantastic meal that made my taste buds dance. Each ingredient in my appetizer, main and dessert was of the highest quality. The raspberries on my cheesecake look like they were picked out of a magazine. The black caviar was large and plentiful. My tuna steak was seared to perfection and the lava cake spoke to my soul. I can still remember what it tastes like. I can't recommend this place to you because it's paywalled behind a very hefty price tag of a suite, but if you can afford it, Lumine will blow you away in every single aspect. It serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and to be honest, I would not go anywhere else. Now this ship also offers an exclusive chef's table meal. It's one time per cruise, very limited, and usually done on the magic carpet as one of those sunset dinners. You have to make sure you book it super early to get into it. We got on the ship as early as we could, and it was already booked with 30 people waiting. <laughs> so I do plan to review it on my next set of videos. So like I said, make sure to subscribe. Overall, Celebrity Edge offers an insane amount of dining options. My ratings should help you navigate some of the complexities. Remember, if you can only go to one paid restaurant, I would start with Eden, then I would go with La Petite Chef and La Grande Bistro, followed by Fine Cut, and finally a Rooftop and Raw on Five. Pro tip here is to make sure you buy these before you cruise. You can go to your cruise planner and save about 10% by purchasing them early. You can save a ton more money if you buy a dining package that allows you to go to multiple restaurants on your sailings. You can pick any restaurant you want out of that dining package and if you plan on going to more than one restaurant, that package is a no-brainer. Make sure to buy it in your cruise planner prior to your sailing to save some money. Now last tip is to make sure to get your bookings in as soon as you get on your cruise. So go to any paid restaurants as soon as you get on the boat and ask them to book out the reservations for your entire cruise. All of the paid restaurants tend to get booked up on the last few days. So if you have a large party or you want to eat at a normal time, book as soon as you get on the ship and that way you're all set. If you have any other questions, make sure to drop them down below. I'll make sure to answer it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.